Welcome back to another video. Hope you are having a great day. And today we've got here a special laptop. Now, when we look at it at a distance, we might confuse it with a regular computer laptop with a minimalistic design, which it has a really interesting and minimalistic design. But that is it. It's just minimalistic in terms of design because it has the newest AMD CPU with NPU, which we will talk about it in just a few moments. It has two GPUs, one of which is the NVIDIA RTX 4070, 64 gigabytes of RAM and a two terabyte SSD. And besides that, a lot more stuff. So let's dive in. And if you are watching this video on your Windows 10 or 11 computer and you still haven't activated and can't even edit your desktop icons, don't forget to check out cdksales.com where we can find budget official OEM keys at an affordable price. And with the coupon code that you can see on screen and down below on the video description, it will get even cheaper. And besides Windows 11 Pro, if you are looking for Windows 10 or even an office suit that we can aggregate directly to our Microsoft account, you can use the same coupon code, which will give you the best price possible at this moment. So just in case, the link will be down below. The Asus ProArt P16 comes with the latest AMD Ryzen AI HX370 CPU, which is AMD's answer to CPUs like Snapdragon X Elite. And we will talk about it in just a few moments in more detail. But here we've got a superior performance while maintaining the x86 platform and not going to the ARM platform, which is really interesting. But we will check some numbers in just a few moments. Now, looking at the screen, it has this 16 inches OLED display with a resolution of 3840 by 2400 at 60 hertz. It has a touch panel with support for a stylus, which is included with this laptop and can be useful both for creative tasks and also for simple notes or sketches. The screen has Gorilla Glass 11 protection. This is a term that usually we associate with our mobile phones, but when we purchase a laptop, usually we don't look at that number. Now, in average, the normal casual laptop has six times less protection than Gorilla Glass 11, but this is just a case of searching when you are looking for your next laptop. It's great to see it right over here, especially when we are handling with our fingers and with a stylus, for example. In terms of contrast, colors, viewing angles, it's just impeccable. It is glossy and the only thing that we need to be mindful of it is the direct light shining on it. But that's typical behavior for any screen like this. Other than that, simply top notch. It comes in this black color. Asus calls it nano black. It is a matte black that in my opinion looks really cool and it's designed to resist to smudges and fingerprints. Actually, does a good job for the past two weeks that I've been using it. It doesn't prevent 100% of the marks, but it will disguise it really well, even when we get the fingerprint right over here. And we will only notice depending on the angle that we are looking at it and the angle of the light. So a great job here on the finish. Now, this is a laptop that when we pick it up, we feel that it is robust, it is well built. And that's not because of the weight, because we will compare it with a similar laptop with the same screen size, which is a bit heavier and a bit thicker. But when we touch it, it feels really, really premium laptop. Besides that, it has a lot of ASUS certifications, which you might check on the link that I will leave down below. But basically, really extreme low temperatures, extreme high temperatures, high altitude, and a lot more. Just check on the link down below. It has this new and very subtle logo here on the lid, and it also has this invincible inch, which enhances the aesthetics, but also aids in the cooling. It has a lot of connectivity starting here on the left side. We will find a fast charging port, HDMI 2.1 supporting up to 8K, USB Type-C 4, also known as 
Thunderbolt. So besides all the hardware that we have right over here, we can connect ultra fast storage or even an external GPU. And it also has a USB 3.2 generation two and a combined audio jack. On the right side, we will find the USB type C 3.2 generation two, USB type A 3.2 generation two, and next the Express 7.0 card reader that will reach 1000 megabytes per second reads and on writes. And I don't know about you, but I don't have have any SD card that can achieve those speeds but it's just great to have a SD card slot and besides that a fast one now besides all these connectivities there is one more actually more than one but this one is important and we don't see it which is Wi-Fi 7 so really fast speeds on Wi-Fi as well and with all the hardware that this laptop has especially the GPU the RTX 4070 which usually makes the laptops a bit thicker and heavier we would expect to be taller or thicker and heavier and it's not if we compare this to the MacBook Pro 16 inches which is a computer that I love we will see for example that the Asus Pro R16 is 14.9 millimeters thick with a weight of 1.85 kilos while the 16 inches MacBook Pro is 16.2 millimeters thick with a weight of 2.14 kilos by the way the image that you are seeing is just an example but it's my MacBook Pro of 14 inches but if you check out and I'll try to leave a link down below for the specifications of the MacBook Pro but we will be able to compare one of my favorite laptops which is the MacBook Pro with a great build quality but with non-dedicated GPU and this one right over here with a dedicated GPU but maintaining lower weight and a bit slimmer so Asus did a great job right over here not only in terms of hardware and looks but also in terms of the thickness and in terms of weight. So for those like myself and yourself that we are looking for a computer and we are looking in terms of performance, which you will see that this will blast some of the Mac computers that we have. And then in terms of aesthetics, looks and build quality is equally great, if not better in some areas, which we will talk about it. Then it's just a matter of do I prefer Windows? Do I prefer Mac OS? The apps that I use are Windows or Mac OS. And this is just great when we can put aside aesthetics, build quality and everything else. And it's just a matter of operating choice, which is not a easy choice. But nonetheless, it's great to see. Now, the keyboard is a chiclet style keyboard it's comfortable and backlit but right next to it it has the best trackpad that I've used so far in terms of touch in terms of precision and size it's just great and once again the comparison that I do in all laptops it's always with my Mac Pro, which has one if not the best trackpad that I've used before I used this Pro Art B 16 and besides being a great trackpad it has the dial pad that can boost productivity in a lot of applications actually in all of the applications but it's predefined for adobe premiere for example lightroom classic after effects illustrator office and so on and so forth but if i want to configure for any other app i can do i just need to go to the configurations page and then configure the way that i wanted to work with a app and basically that is it the sound system is also cool it has six speakers Armon Cardon and it has Dolby Atmos and basically this is it in terms of the outside but now let's dive into the inside so the CPU which is really interesting for any tech enthusiast like myself and yourself it is the AMD Ryzen AI AX 3070 with 12 cores and 24 threads it will reach up to 5.1 gigahertz along with the npu that delivers 50 tops now for those that are not familiar with the npu term or tops term don't worry i'm not yet as well we are getting used to it npu is basically the new cpu to treat all the tasks that will help on ai tasks it means neural processing unit and tops is the score that these npus are getting so in this particular case we have a cpu with 50 tops and before we move on with the rest of the hardware and performance and so on and so forth this cpu was introduced in my opinion 
least to compete against the Snapdragon X Elite which is one of the jumps in terms of revolution here on the ARM side but AMD has a great answer right over here. Now if we compare the tops of the Snapdragon X Elite with the tops of this AMD CPU right over here we have 50 tops here and on the Snapdragon X Elite 45 tops while maintaining a super Superior performance on this CPU right over here from AMD and maintaining the x86 platform which is the platform that it's most used for Windows apps. Now ARM will get there but we are not sure when and right over here we have x86 with a huge performance that we haven't seen yet. So these are great moments to see this kind of technology just ramping up from one side and ramping up from the other side and great for us consumers that will have more choices. Another really cool thing here on the ProArt P16 is that it doesn't use any thermal paste on the CPU to achieve a better cooling effect. It uses liquid metal which achieves even better results and lower temperatures. Now this AMD CPU it has a integrated GPU which is not bad at all it's the Radeon 890M but Asus decided to put in here a NVIDIA RTX 4070 which is far superior and by this time you know the results we can play almost everything here on this GPU. It also has 64 gigabytes of GDDR5 X RAM and 2 terabytes on the SSD. Now let's take a look at some benchmarks and starting with the Geekbench 6 we have a awesome score of 2891 on single core score and 15000 on multi core score. Now in terms of comparison with the Snapdragon X Elite which I haven't tested already but there are results online that we can get. You can see right over there that it has a single core score of 2446 on single core score and 4 14,277 on multi-core score. So this means that they are basically head to head being that AMD is superior and a little bit superior. Now if we will notice huge differences on daily tasks I believe that we won't. In terms of video rendering and 3D modeling we will notice some difference especially on rendering times and so on and so forth but one thing that it's great is that a few months ago Snapdragon X Elite was to revolutionize the market and it is doing it so but AMD on the platform x86 is delivering the same or even better so x86 isn't dead and this is great news. Now looking at Cinebench so that you can compare with other machines Cinebench 2024 on single core score 116 multi core score 1153 and then on the GPU side 10300 having in mind that this is the RTX 47 result. So this is a laptop designed for really heavy tasks and besides those tasks for those that want to take advantage of a laptop that can also play some eye demanding games. Now to give you an idea in terms of real world performance if we want to pick up a video and put it in I don't know CapCut for example with a 4k timeline 28 minutes without any effects at all so that we can have an idea it will take about five minutes to render which is really cool 28 minutes render it in five minutes. Now for a more realistic timeline I also put in a 13 minute 4k timeline and it took two minutes to render on CapCut. If we move to DaVinci Resolve which I know that a lot of you use it took on the same 13 minute 4k timeline only three minutes to render and these are just impressive results. In terms of the editing process we will have no issues at all and we are getting results superior to desktops that we use and not just by a little bit but by a lot. For example I use one of my favorite computers which is the Mac Studio. I've shared it here on the channel but just so that you have an idea if we look at the Geekbench results my Mac Studio has the M1 Max and it scores 2500 on single core score and 12,600 in multi core score and it's a great machine still going on. Now you have the M2 Max, the M3, the M4 just soon but 
nonetheless we are talking about a laptop which is surpassing a lot of desktops on the windows side and on the mac side and maintaining a great efficiency which i will show you in just a few moments now as i said it has the rtx 4070 so if we want to play games we will be just fine i did play around with a few and i believe that the hardest thing will be to find some games that we can't play i tried casual games like crash bandicoot which is really fun forza horizon 5 also tried forza motorsports and call of duty the experience was just awesome so for anyone looking for a laptop that can handle 3d modeling or video editing or any other task which is really really high demanding but at the same time wants a computer that has this non-gaming style it is really really minimalistic with all these features and at the end of the day wants to play really high demanding games this is it or at least this is one of the best options that i'm aware of now it also comes with asus ai tools like the story cube which i haven't explored fully yet but it seems to be really awesome to manage our video and photo libraries and news tree is also really interesting it helps to create ai generated images whether by text or using the stylus additionally it also has a full hd webcam so that we can create some content Content or video conferencing calls and the battery life according to my own scientific tests which involve playing a 4k youtube video which is something that we do very commonly not only youtube but uh, streaming services and so on and so forth and then i do measure the battery consumption over 10 minutes as a sample now it did start up with 92 percent battery and it ended with 90 percent so this means that we can expect approximately 8 hours and 20 minutes for this kind of tasks. Now, if we are working with PowerPoint, Excel and Word and similar apps, then we will have a longer battery efficiency. But if we are playing games, then lower battery. And I still haven't had the chance to test out a Snapdragon X Elite yet but we'll do soon and once that happens i'm really curious to know and share with you if the efficiency on the snapdragon is higher than on the amd having in mind that this one right over here has a superior performance than the snapdragon x elite but until then i hope that you have enjoyed this video hope that you have enjoyed to know that the asus pro art 16 is here with some really awesome specs starting with the cpu and then going over everything that we have seen if that was the case don't forget the usual thumbs up right over there which is really next to the stylus right over here my name is Werther george and as always i'll see you on the next one